All right, so we got some homework here due tomorrow. There's four problems, but you know they, they take a while, especially those last two. So, so why don't we have a look? Um, so this will be, uh, you know, this uh, this stuff will be on the final. So you want to kind of get this stuff figured out. There's three different uh, types of uh, f equals m a type kinetics that we do. So there's translation, which are the first two, and then rotation, which are the second two. All right, and then also we have free plane motion. So so let's have a look here at this first one. So this forklift is accelerating up the ramp. So it's accelerating backwards up the ramp. While it's doing that, it's lifting the load. So what we want to figure out is how uh, quickly it can accelerate before it flips over, before it tips. Okay. So what we're doing here, we're going up the ramp. Um, we've got a lot of forces, uh, accelerations, particularly in line with the ramp. So I would suggest setting up an inclined axis system, as I'm showing there, and analyzing it in that way. So like we want to do, you want to come up with a free body diagram. That's always the, the thing to be doing, especially on something that's as involved as this is. All right, so there it is. So what we got is we're, the whole uh, forklift is accelerating up the ramp at 0.3 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, so you're going to break the thing up into the general forklift there and then also the, uh, the load that's accelerating upwards. So both of those have an acceleration of 0.3 meters per second squared. Okay. Now um, what we're doing here are dynamic reactions. So if the thing's going to tip, it's going to tip what counterclockwise, right? So if it tips, it will come over that away. So um, what that means is if it tips, this reaction here will go to zero. So it's going to tip over the front wheel is what it's going to do. Now, what you um, would do then would be to set the uh, back wheel reaction to zero because that's what will happen just before it tips. Okay, so right before it tips, that uh, reaction will go to zero. So that's really what you're testing for is kind of that boundary condition, right between tipping and no tipping, okay? So we set that to zero. RA is an unknown. I didn't put it on here, but there's also the force of friction. But we're gonna take moments about the bottom of A so the friction won't enter into that, okay? Okay, now what I did right here, you know, and what you should do is take those forces and get them all broken up in the X prime and Y prime directions. So you want to break those forces up into components parallel and normal to the ramp. Okay. And then uh, get the accelerations on there as well. So 0.3 up the ramp. You, in addition, you've got an A sub Y for that uh, load that's accelerating upwards. Okay. So there you go. So that's the basic setup on it. Now I would suggest doing all this stuff, you know, beforehand, getting the, getting the free body diagram as I'm showing, um, so that, you know, everything's set up and ready to go. Okay. Now what you're going to do then is apply this sum of M A equation. This is inertial moments. So we're going to have I sub G alpha, uh, even though that's going to go to zero because there isn't any alpha yet. It's not tipping yet. It's just about to. And then you're going to have M A G X Y bar plus M A G Y X bar. So that's the equation that you'll apply here. All right, so if we got this free body diagram going here, we can start to 
write up this equation is what we can do. Okay. So just one term at a time. Remember, as, you know, as I always say, on the left goes the static stuff. On the right goes the dynamic stuff. The static stuff are the forces and weights. They're all weights on this one. So you just kind of go through those different components of weight, and there's four of them. So you're going to have four terms that go on the left of the equal sign. So for instance, you're going to have 295 right there. That's the uh, y prime component of the weight <coughs> of the um, oh the box is lifted. Okay. Now the weight acts down. So what that would do, that would come on around counterclockwise, so that would be positive. So that's 295 newtons times that offset distance of 2.6 meters right there. Okay. And then you'll also have the X prime component of that box, 107.4 newtons. That's going to come around counterclockwise again about this point here that we're taking moments about. So that will get a positive also. That's a uh, X force. So it's got a Y moment arm over here on the left of 1.4. Okay. And then you got a couple other terms to pick up the weight uh, of the forklift. Watch your signs. One's positive, one's negative. <coughs> and you know, get the proper component together with the proper moment arm. Are we, we good with that left side there? Uh, uh, what about the plus at the end? Do we ignore that or...? Um, plus at the end. Uh, oh, right, the right there? The long equation. No, no, uh, it's the, uh, the, the blue. That one? There. Yeah, no, there's two more terms that need to be picked up. Oh. That's why I've got that there. All right, then... Uh, from there, put on the accelerations. I put the acceleration vectors on there. I drew them up in red there, and they're going to be treated just like force vectors. So they create what's called inertial moments. What you've got then is the different masses. Okay, we have the mass of the um, box there, 32 kilograms times its y acceleration times a moment arm. Now that's a Y prime acceleration as it comes normal to the ramp. So it's coming around that way. Okay. So that's going uh, counter, excuse me, that one's going clockwise. So that gets a negative. So 32 kilograms times the unknown AY times an X prime moment arm of 2.6 meters. We also have the acceleration of the box, 32 kilograms, times its acceleration in the X prime direction up the ramp, 0.3 times 1.4 meters. Okay. And then you've got one other inertial moment to deal with, one other acceleration. Watch your signs. Um, be sure you pick up that dimension on the back side. It's different than the 1.4 in the front. It's 1.5 in the back. So watch for that one, OK? Question, yeah? Should there be an acceleration? Oh, no, I guess not. The AY is only because of force vectors. Yeah, yeah, AY exists because you're picking up the box. That means there would only be one term for the forklift itself. Right. Yeah, the forklift only has one because it's not going in the Y prime direction. It's not accelerating that way. Yeah, right. Okay. Other questions on that? All right. Um, it could be negative or uh, yeah I'll just let you work that one out yeah I think you might be right on that but I just put a plus and you know there's another one there I guess is what I meant by that plus sign it could be positive or negative there so this sign could be 
Could be negative also. Could be either one. Okay. Hmm. Did I bust the sign on that one? A 32.3, 1.4? I think I did, didn't I? Yeah, it's clockwise, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So this one ought to be minus. There we go. Yeah, it's a bust on that. Okay. okay. So are we all right with that? And then you just solve for AY, and that'll get you the maximum acceleration of that box for the forklift tips. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Okay. Okay, we got this other one here, 332. A little bit simpler because we only got one part to it here. Um, remember this 280 pounds. And then uh, just be sure you get the proper moment arm with that also. Let's uh, just add the two together, right? So you're going to want this moment arm right there. So what, 3.7? Okay. And then, uh, okay, we've got that force up there. We've got A because it's accelerating to the right. And then we got the weight. And we want to find the dynamic reactions this time. You want to get the mass of the forklift. Just take uh, the weight over the acceleration due to gravity. 32.2 feet per second squared. Divide that out. You'll get the uh, mass there in slugs. 298. Okay. So you start with that. And then you just uh, do the moments again, okay? So, you know, you got the mass at 328. You got the free body diagram. There is no Y acceleration. It's all X acceleration. Assume no tipping. And then you're just going to come up with those terms there that you have to put in. Um, you know, there's three on the left for statics and just one on the right for dynamics. Okay, and then you just, uh, I just left it in terms of AGX, that way I could plug in the two different AGXs, 6 and 30. When I plugged in 6, I got 1287 per wheel, okay, because there's two wheels there at B. So the actual answer I got there was, oh, see, I put 2RB in there, you, you know, that's how I chose to do it. So just be aware of that. Okay. So when the thing accelerates at 6 feet per second squared, the reaction at B is 1287 pounds per wheel. Um, when, you, when it accelerates at 30 feet per second squared, RB is negative 328 pounds per wheel. What does that mean in terms of reality? If it's got a negative reaction at B, what's happening? Yeah, it's tipping. It's actually going into tipping is what it's doing. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, you know, a common thing you analyze when you look at translation is, is reactions and whether something's tipping or not. Okay. We got any questions on that? Okay. All right, so that's the, the translational ones with tipping and whatnot. Now the rotate the ones that are rotating are, are you know a little bit involved. There's kind of a series of steps on these you have to go through. So the rotational ones, 
you know, we've got uh, got this here. So what's happening there is this rod is rotating about A. You've got that force at the top that's pulling it. It's at a 58 degree angle. We want to find the reactions at A. Okay. So, so that's what we want to be doing on this one. So what you want to do is figure out what the moment is. First, uh, do a few things here. The weight will enter into this one. So I took uh, the mass times gravity, and I got the weight, 70.6 newtons. Okay. And then... I went ahead and found the moment of inertia about A. Now, you can do it two different ways. If you look at the back of the formula sheet, it's pretty common to have a slender rod rotating about its end, which would be point A. So they give you a, a, a formula to find the moment of inertia of a rod about its end. It's one-third ml squared. So you can just do that, one-third times the mass times the length squared. And that's basically 6.94 kilogram meters squared. Or you can do the transfer axis theorem. Moment of inertia of a rod about its own center of gravity is 1 half ml squared. And then add in the md squared term. And that will get you Ia. Either way you can do it. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. Okay. So however you approach it, the moment of inertia is 6.936 kilogram meters squared. Okay. Now what we have here are dynamic reactions. Okay, Reactions caused by the acceleration of that rod. Well, caused by the weight and the acceleration, both I guess I should say, and the forces applied. So we have to know what the acceleration is. Now, when I say we have to know what the acceleration is, what that means is the acceleration of the center of gravity, G. Okay? So we got to figure out how G is accelerating around A. Now, to do that, you got to know omega because you need R omega squared because what G is doing with respect to A is accelerating in towards A with a normal acceleration. And we got omega, so that's okay. But the other thing we need is alpha. So to find alpha, we can use this uh, moment equation that only applies to fixed axis rotation. And that sum of ma is ia alpha. So what you would do then on the left is sum the moments about a, just like you would in, uh, in statics. <clears throat> so what you've got here is the weight, which is 70.63 newtons. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a weight that causes a moment. The moment arm will be half the length of the rod because that 70.63 is at the center of gravity, which is in the middle of the rod. But that's a Y force, so all we really want is the X component of that. So we just want the distance here, and I'm really starting to get crowded, but we want that <coughs> distance right there. So that distance will be cosine of that rod angle times the length from A to G. So cosine 58 times 0.85. That's that X distance. You multiply it by the 70.63. And that's negative because it's clockwise. Okay. So that's what we got. Negative 70.63 cosine 58 times 0.85. Okay. And then we got this 90 newtons up top. And that moment arm will be, you know, wherever you want to put it. And again, this is a bit of a mess here, but there you go right there. X force, you get a Y moment arm. Sine 58 times the full length of the rod, because that 90 is applied at the top of the rod. So 90 times sine 58 times 1.7. 
Okay. So once you get that worked out, that's the left-hand side. That's the moment supplied to the rod due to the weight and that pull. You just equate that to IA. Now, not IG, IA, because we're taking moments about A, and we're just doing this simple, simplified equation here that we can use for fixed axis rotation. All right. So we'll take IA times alpha. So sum of MA is IA alpha. That's the equation we're using here. And then we just work on through. Let's solve for alpha. It's 14.13 radians per second squared. Looks to be counterclockwise there. Okay. So once you've got that figured out, you can get the tangential and normal accelerations of the center of gravity. Because what they're doing there, see, they're, they're rotating around A. So, and they're accelerating. So on account of alpha, we got an acceleration up that away. And on account of the normal, which is our omega squared, we got an acceleration that way. So we got, as G rotates around A here, we got a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration, okay? So we had to figure out what alpha was to find the tangential. And we had to know what omega was to find the normal. So I go ahead and do that. Now notice I'm going alpha r, omega squared r. r is half the length of the rod because I'm going to the center of gravity is what I'm doing there, okay? All right. So now we got the acceleration of the center of gravity, and we can do the dynamic reactions now. And they'll just be like statics reactions, except instead of being equal to zero, they're equal to MA. So. All right, so what's happening here is I've got that uh, AN doing that, AT doing that, um, and I've got, I think, uh, yeah, AT is 12.01, I think. And AN is 2.754, like so. So I'm going to do X and Y reactions here. So I want X and Y accelerations. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of trig there and break those things up. So I got 58 degrees down below. That's by the parallel, or I don't know what that, parallel angles, I think they call that. And then 90 minus 58 gets me 32 up above. So that's how I'm going to do that. Okay, so 58 below, 32 up above. And then once I've got that, it's just kind of a little trigonometry exercise here. So I'm just going to sum up reactions. So what I've got is sum of fx. I'll call left positive because everything's going to the left there. So I just go ahead and see that, and I'll just call left positive. So I got 90 to the left, and then I'm going to show my RAX to the left also. Okay. And then I'll have MA, and I'll use a trigonometric function there to, uh, to get the X component of that. All right. So I got 7.2 times 12.01, that's MA. That 12.01 acts up and left at a 32 degree angle. So cosine 32 will get me the X component. And then I got 7.2 times the uh, normal acceleration. Cosine 58 will get me the X component of that. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of trig there getting that stuff resolved. So I got these two accelerations here. And then I've got a horizontal line. So I'm just going to break those things up into X components, like so, cosine of that angle. So cosine 32, cosine 58.
And, you know, just get everything on the proper side of the equation, give it the proper sign, and things will just come out. So REX actually is to the right there, negative 6.16. So that means it's to the right. Okay. And then I can go sum of FY and do the same sort of thing here. So REY up. Um, okay. So RAY is up, the weight is down. That's what's happening on the left and on the right. Same sort of thing as I just did, except instead of cosine, I'm using sine now. I got a positive for the 12.01 and a negative for the 2.754. So up and down. I can go ahead and work that through and I'll get the reaction there, 99.6. Up, okay. So what I'm doing with that, again, I'm just working with these right triangles. So I'm getting that component down and that one up is what I'm doing. doing all right so the steps on that were to first anticipate we're going to take moments about a so find the moment of inertia about a and find uh, the weight also then take the moments about a to find alpha realizing that we already have omega then use a alpha to find the tangential acceleration omega to find the normal acceleration and draw them up on the rod there and then do these uh, force equations. Static stuff on the left, dynamics on the right, get the proper sign on everything and you know don't overthink it, just do that, solve it out. Okay. Doing all right with that? Any questions? Okay. Right. Got another one. This one's a little bit simpler in that it's not at an angle, but it's a little bit more complicated in that it's got two parts to it. So the way I approached this was to handle the parts separately. Okay. So instead of finding a common center of gravity, I just went ahead and treated the cylinder and the plate as two separate objects throughout the problem. You could do it either way. I don't know if there's a real time advantage to doing it one way or the other. Might I don't know. If so that's just how I approached it. Okay. All right. So this this is fairly similar to the other one in the general outline of the approach. What I want to do is find the moment of inertia. So to find the moment of inertia, I'm going to find the moment of inertia of each of the two parts about A. So for the plate, I sub G is 1 12th M A squared plus B squared. That's off your formula sheet. For the cylinder, it's 1 12th M 3 R squared plus H squared. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm using axes that go through the center of gravity and are parallel to the pin in that pin joint. That's what I'm doing there, okay? So you have to use the proper formula. You know, that's important there. So the pin here that it's rotating about is coming out of the page like that. So the axes I'm using to find these moments of inertia are parallel to that pin that it's rotating about, okay? So if you look on your formula sheet for those axes, you'll get the formulas. 1 12th m a squared plus b squared and 1 12th m 3 r squared plus h squared. Okay. And those all relate to that, those blue axes coming out of there that I just drew.
Okay, we're good. We're doing all right. Okay. All right. Next thing to do is to find the weights because the weights affect the moments. They cause the moment, you know, or part of the moment anyway. So what I got there is 78.48 and 56.86. Just mass times gravity, and that's about it. All right. So once I got that, I got to go through the business of getting the total moments of inertia. Fairly involved, so I set up a table. I sub G for both the plate and the cylinder. That's kilogram meters squared, 1 12th M A squared plus B squared for the plate, 1 12th M 3 R squared plus H squared for the cylinder. Okay. And I get 0.1333 for the plate and 0.0504 for the cylinder. Okay, then I want the mass. I got that. It's 8 and it's 6. Then I want the distance. Okay, so the distance is this offset distance from A to these centers of gravity for the different pieces. It's half of 40 centimeters for the plate, and it's 40 centimeters plus half of 12 for the cylinder. I want those in meters, so they're 0.2 and 0.46. Y'all okay with that? So point, and I'm going from A to the center of the plate, half a 0.4, and I'm going A to the center, center of the cylinder, 0.4 plus half of the 12 centimeter diameter. Okay. So if I get IG, the mass, and the offset distance, then for the rest of us, just plugging stuff into a formula. The transfer axis bit is MD squared. Then I just add I sub G and MD squared and get the total. So 0.45 and 1.32, add those up, and you get the total moment of inertia, 1.77 kilogram meters squared. Okay. So that's the moment of inertia of those pieces about the pin joint at A. Now the reason you need that is you got to find alpha. And you'll use the moment equation to get alpha, and you'll need moment of inertia in there, okay? So, so that's what's going on. Questions on that? Okay. All right. So the next step then is to find alpha. Notice you've got omega already. You need omega for the normal acceleration, but you need alpha for the uh, tangential acceleration. So you take the moment about A and set it equal to IA alpha. You already got IA. It's 1.77. To get the moment about A, what you're doing there, you're putting those weights, which are both acting down on there. So that's 78.48 for the plate and 56.86 for the cylinder. And then you got those moment arms that we figured up just a minute ago. So 0 0.2, 0 0.46. I'm calling clockwise positive because I think everything's coming around clockwise. So I just take 78.48 times 0.2 and 58.86 times 0.46. Now, there is just a little bit of a frictional moment there. Friction opposes motion. So friction will be doing that, and that's 4. So that's minus 4. Remember to get that little bit in there, okay? And then set that equal to 177 alpha. So alpha is 21.86 radians per second squared. Okay.
We're doing all right. <coughs> all right. So we got the moment of inertia. We use that to get alpha. We got alpha and omega now. We can find the tangential and normal acceleration of those centers of gravity. Okay. So take alpha times r and omega squared times r, you'll get those accelerations. Okay. So we got normal and tangential for these accelerations. So what that's doing there, that's telling us how that thing is accelerating around point A at this instant. So those tangentials, they act down. The normals act in towards the center. Okay. So the tangential is what, 4.37 and 10.06 and then the normals 1.458 and 3.353. Okay. So that's what that thing's up to. And all I'm doing there, I'm just taking alpha r and omega squared r. That's it. Okay. You were given omega and we calculated alpha. Now here's where, you know, I might have just found an overall center of gravity and, you know, instead of having to do two sets of calcs, I would have done one. But, you know, I think it's kind of six, one and a half dozen or the other, as they say. Questions on that? We're doing okay. All right. So you get that, and then the last thing to do here is to uh, find the reactions. Again, you're going to go sum of fx, sum of uh, r, sum of fx to find rax, and sum of fy to find ray. Just remember to include the accelerations on the right. That's, that's all you got to do to finish this thing up. So you see the process on this is very similar to the previous one, okay? So you got Rax, I'm calling left positive, is mass of the plate times its uh, normal acceleration plus mass of the cylinder times its normal acceleration. So it's 31.8, um, sum of Fy is sum of Magy. So Ray up, the two weights down, and then both of the tangential accelerations are down. So they both get negative signs and they're multiplied by their mass, okay? So that's what's going on there. So we got these accelerations, and then we've also got the uh, weights that we're considering too, okay? So that's the deal with that one. You know, when you're going through these, these rotational ones especially get a little tricky. Well, I don't know if tricky, that's the right word. They, they got a lot of steps, okay? Just flow chart out the steps. Be sure you understand what you're doing and why as you work your way through the problem. Okay, that, I, that's, that's a suggestion I would make to help you understand these things just you know just be sure you know why you're doing this stuff and what the flow is on this stuff so we got rax all right why have to put the weights down here because i already got those accelerations in there what do we got we got this one's the bigger one right 78.58 all right 48 and then 58.86. There we go. Okay. So those will take a little while, as you're probably aware. Any questions on it?
Okay. So that's about what I got. Those are the four that are due. We'll have uh, pizza in here at four. And we'll have meat cop people too. Okay. We'll talk about meat cop. So if you're interested, come on by. If you just want a piece of pizza, come on by. Okay. All right. Good to go.